In this lecture, we'll discuss error checking and we'll define validation versus verification and then talk about three types of verification including bit parity, check sum, and check digit. So let's start by defining validation. And the best example of validation is a web form like this. So if you're familiar with HTML, um, you know that when you create an input box, you can do some checks on it to make sure that the user is actually entering what you want them to enter, right? So in an email field, you can make a type email and if the user types in something that doesn't have an at sign or a dot com or a dot org, if it looks strange, it won't let it through. You could also use an attribute called required, which would make this field required. So I couldn't press the sign in button unless I've actually entered something in these fields. So all of these things that, you know, checking that it's of the correct type, of the correct length, that it's in range, that it's not left blank, all of these types of checks are called validation. And you want to validate everything before you add any kind of information to the database, etc. And we say in HCI or in computer science that if a user makes a mistake at this stage, it's not their fault, it's our fault. So if we wanted a, a seven digit number and, and they were able to give a six, that's our fault for letting them through, it's not their fault. So validation is that initial check. But let's say I have an input box like a phone number and the user enters a phone number and it's of the correct type, it's of the, of the right length, it's in range, whatever, right? But then when they send it through, they've missed a, they've actually, instead of typing a one, they, they typed a, a two, which is incorrect, or they lied. How can we make sure that this is actually what they meant to send or that, or that they're telling the truth? Well, that's verification. Verification is checking that they've actually either told the truth or that, they've, uh, that we've received what they meant to send. So now that we've defined verification, let's go ahead and talk about verification in computer science or in memory. So we'll start with bit parity. Imagine we have an 8-bit uh, number here, represented in 8 bits, and the number is 42. So our 32 is on, our 8 is on, and our 2 is on. So we want to use something called even parity to check that this is the information that the user meant to send. Because what if we, re if we receive this and the number is not 42, but it's been switched to you know, something else, it's been switched to 10. How can, we, how can we figure that out? Well, we add something to the end of this, the most significant bit, the leftmost bit, called a parity bit. And if we're using even parity, we want to make the number of ones even. So the count, you know, if we count the number of ones, we have three in the number 42, we want to make this even, so we add a one. If the numbers were of, of ones were, if the number of ones were, were already even, then we would make uh, the parity bit a zero, which would keep it even. So now that we've sent that through and something goes wrong, we can detect that because we're expecting even parity, but we end up with um, an odd number and we can find out that there's something wrong. Same thing in odd parity. In odd parity, you can set a zero or a one, and depending on uh, you know, how many ones there are in, in the, in the uh, byte or in the word that you're sending, you can detect if there's something wrong there as well. So you may be asking, okay, well, well what happens if we have two bits out of place? Well, that's called a burst error. Two or more bits is a burst error, and we can detect that with something called the parity block method. So let's look at an example. Let's imagine we have three ASCII bytes, A, B, C, A is 65, B is 66, C is 67, and we've done even parity from left to right, as, as normal, we've done the parity bit. But if we do it also from top to bottom, we can detect two errors or a burst error. And it's interesting to note that bit parity can be represented in a circuit or an integrated circuit. So I've just put a quick example together here, a three bit even parity integrated circuit. It uses two XOR gates and you can see that if you have a truth table on the left hand side with the parity, you can actually replicate it in the integrated circuit. So let's move on to another verification method called checksum. And the best way to explain checksum is just to show you an example. So imagine two ASCII bytes, A and B, A is 65 and, and, B, and B is 66. And we send this data or we store this data and we have, you know, we'll have two bytes if we do that. But we'll add an additional byte. And the additional byte is the sum of A and B. So this gives, gives us 131. And then we'll also take the two's complement or the negative version of, 130, of 131. So we flip all the bits uh, after the first one from the right side. And we end up with the signed number or the two's complement of 131. We take that and we send it along. And now 131 plus negative 131 will, will give you, your, it's basically minusing 131 from 131, and we should get zero. So if we get zero, that means that everything was correct and we now have no error. If we don't get zero, then we can detect an error somewhere. That there's an error somewhere in one of these bit, bits or one of these bytes that we sent. 
So this brings us to our last verification method called check digit. And check digit looks similar to check sum, except that we're not taking the sum of any bytes. What we're doing here is we're taking a extra digit that's derived from a calculation on the other digits themselves. So the best example, again, is just to show you visually. So here's an ISSN number. It has seven numbers, 1144-875, and then there's an X. So that X is going to be our check digit. So we, we have seven bits that we're working with here. And what we do is we follow this algorithm, and we take the first seven digits, and we take the weight starting from eight at the most significant bit, and we go all the way down. We multiply eight times was the first number one, and then we multiply seven times one, and then six times four, et cetera. We keep adding these together. Once we have the sum, we divide it by modulus 11, and this will give us a, remain, uh, a remainder. And we take the remainder, and we subtract it from 11, and we'll end up with either zero to nine or 10. And if it's 10, following the algorithm, we make that 10x. And so what's happening here is we are getting the last digit, which what we call the check digit, from a calculation on the other digits themselves. So the definition of check digit is an additional digit derived from a calculation on the other digits themselves.